get into the boom. Formation is order of movement, all right? The primary structure for this block of instruction is going to be Sergeant Martin. Make sure you guys are taking notes. Give them your attention, all right? If you feel like you're going to fall asleep because the lights are off, all right, it's warm in here, stand up. All right, move to the back of the classroom, do whatever you got to do. All right, you guys understand? All right, everybody feeling all right after this morning? A little sore. All right, it's a little bit of PT, no big deal, right? All right, so, uh, take this forward as word. All right, some of you guys, you've seen this before. All right, some of you, you might not have, okay? And again, like we said yesterday, you might have done things a little bit different at, at your unit now, or maybe if you were active duty, when you're active duty, you might have done things a little bit different. But this is the way we're teaching you, and this is the way you're going to execute it while you're here. You guys understand? Okay. Uh, yeah. Hey, listen up. Uh, what an awesome opportunity it is to come in here and get some really good training, all right? We're starting at the squad level, which is really where we should all start up and then build up from there, okay? So don't take this for granted, thinking, just like Sergeant said, thinking that you've done more advanced stuff, you know? I've been in a fucking platoon assault in some village in Afghanistan, that's, that's awesome, that's great. I guarantee you that every single one of you guys are doing these things in the wrong man. okay? So let's just dull it back down. This is like day one of preseason training. You gotta get good with the basics before you start with the advanced stuff. You start, you know, making Hail Mary uh, passes and flea flickers and shit like that, okay? So how it works is we're going to teach you small unit tactics and they're Vietnam era type tactics, okay? It's the very, very basic, all right? So just pay attention, take notes, ask questions, all right? Feel free to whisper to each other if you don't understand something, raise your hand, all right? We're here to make sure that you guys get the basics down. You're gonna be surprised when we get back out there and start doing PEs, there's always, it's like we're just staring at a bunch of blank faces, like we just had the class. You had an opportunity to ask questions, take notes. And then we get out there, this is the crawl, we're gonna walk, and then we're gonna run. And it never goes, it never goes according to plan, okay? So the more you guys put, put forth the effort, and uh, really pay attention, drink coffee, right? Stay jazzed about it. This is, this is uh, your bread and butter right here. This is really what it's all about, okay? Cool, Sergeant Martin? All right, good morning. I'm Sergeant Martin, can everybody in the back hear me? Yep. All right, excellent. Uh, you guys have your board right over there. Sorry. We've got this one up here. All right, so I'm going to first orient you to the board. Go ahead in the top left corner, you can reference everything on this board in page 6 1 of your Ranger Handbook, okay? Left hand side, we've got administrative notes. That's going to help you follow along with this period of instruction. In the center, on top, you'll see a fire team wedge security hawk. Below that, you'll see a 12 man infantry squad and a fire team wedge. Right hand side, modified wedge security hawk and a modified wedge in the bottom right hand corner. All right, on this board, everything's color coded but it's not personalized, okay? But once we start building our orders, we have boards and you guys will design planning bays for you guys to actually do your orders process, but you guys will um, personalize these. And that's nothing more than saying, uh, Sergeant Smiley will be the alpha team leader and putting his name by his little dot, okay? Color coordinated is exactly that. You've got your alpha team or your lead fire team in blue, your headquarters element in yellow, and your trail fire team or Bravo team in green. Any questions with that? All right, so let's move through it. All right, so the fire team wedge is the most commonly used movement formation in the U.S. Army. Why is that? Command yeah. control. Maximum firepower in all directions at the end. All right. Command and control. What's another way of saying that? Equal distribution of men and weapons. Okay. Command and control. It's easy to control. All right. So. Starting off, you look at the lead fire team. Right here, standing at the apex, is the alpha team leader. Okay? What's the dude's responsibility to the alpha team leader? Route Alright, route planning and route selection. Frontal security. Frontal security. What else? Lane navigation. That goes with the route selection, right? So he does the route selection in the planning portion. He does lane navigation on ground. And he has frontal security. Okay? This is three primary functions of the Alpha Team Leader. To the left and rear at a 45 degree angle, approximately 10 meters, is the automatic rifleman. Alright? To the right and rear at approximately a 45 degree angle at 10 meters is the rifleman accomplishment. Okay? The rifleman has no primary duties and no key weapon systems, so he will perform the secondary duty as accomplishment. 
The right in the rear of him is the Grenadier, and that's what makes up your Alpha Team. Now, if you have excess personnel, you can always beef up your Alpha Team and your Bravo Team, and then you just add a guy here, okay? Now, 20 meters behind that for traveling, 50 meters for traveling Overwatch, I'll cover that in just a second. Standing at the apex of the headquarters element here is the squad, team, uh, the squad leader. One of the primary functions of the squad leader. What is his primary duties and responsibilities? Execution. Uh, planning, execution. Okay, so yeah, planning, execution. But on the ground, what is his primary duties and responsibilities? Controlling the teams, command and control. Okay, so command and control. What else? Communicating to higher that's more so that's done for the RTO. Yeah, that's what about accountability? Yeah. Accountability. Okay. accountability, command and control. And then he's in control of everything the squad does or fails to do. All right. Now, to the right and the rear of him is the RTO. Same thing, 10 meters, 45 degree angle. This 10 meters and 45 degree angle will continue throughout the entire movement formation. All right. To the left and the rear of the squad leader is a machine gun. And to the left of the rear of the machine gun is the assistant gunner. All right, that's your headquarters element. 20 meters behind that is the Bravo team leader, sending the apex of the Bravo team of the trail fire team. The responsibilities of the Bravo team leader is assisting the squad leader in accountability, command and control, and rear security. Okay? To the right and the rear of him is the automatic rifleman. To the left and the rear of the Bravo team leader is the rifleman accomplishment. Or your alternate, was that one? It worked for a second. Okay. Um, and again, to the left and the rear of the rifle accomplishment is the grenadier. All right. So remember that your rifleman and your Bravo team has the same duty responsibilities as a rifleman and your alpha team. Okay. That's your secondary accomplishment. Why is it important for us to have two accomplishments? In case the first dude gets lost, one is none. All right, so in case the first dude gets lost, we're not going to get lost, but we're all human, right? We all make mistakes. So if we come to a halt, you know, this alpha team leader probably needs to talk to this guy and say, hey, what's our, what's our pace count right now? And the Bravo team leader should do the same thing so that when they come together and talk to the squad leader, they can exchange that information of whether or not <coughs> We are where we are, and how, this is how far we move. Thank you. All right. Now I have to shadow out Charles board. I can give you one of these. All right. So we talked about the actual movement formation itself, what it's made up of. This thing is free. Um, so now we're going to talk about machine gun placement. Okay. All right, so now we're talking about machine gun placement, okay? If you guys notice right now, the gun is on the left-hand side of the formation, right? So that's considered what? Strong side on the left side strong. All right, so strong side or it's coming, or in, by doctrine, it's considered a heavy left formation, okay? If the gun's on the right, it'd be considered a heavy right formation, all right? What determines where the machine gun is placed? Met TC. Met okay? So based off of what the squad leader decides during the planning portion, phase of this patrol, he's going to decide at what points of the patrol he wants heavy left or heavy right. Okay? So, if we know we're going to move a thousand meters, when we move a thousand meters, we're going to go into a draw, but once we come out of that draw, we need to move to a heavy right. Does the squad leader have to halt the formation to make that change? No. He just tells the RTO and the gun to AG to swap. They move this way, the RTO comes over here, and they transition from heavy left to heavy right while moving. Okay? Important for you guys to know that. Next, let's talk about leadership positions, okay? How many leadership positions do we have that are fixed? Three. Three. Four. Zero. One. One leadership position is fixed. That's the alpha team leader. The alpha team leader must stay at the apex of the lead fire team. That way he can do his three primary responsibilities. What were those again? All right, main navigation, strong security, and route selection, okay? Now, the squad leader is an unfixed position. Meaning what? He can move around as he needs to. Squad leader can go anywhere he wants to 
inside this formation to maintain control, right? The Bravo team leader is also unfixed. Where can he go? He'd go up. Right. Anywhere within his team, okay? So essentially, it's kind of like basketball or soccer where you have the whole field, right? And everybody has their assigned sectors, but they can only go so far, right? So the Bravo team leader has to stay in the back half of the court. The squad leader can go anywhere he wants to. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. That's your leadership, fixed and, unship, or fixed and unfixed positions. All right. So we talked about it earlier, equal distribution of men, weapons, and equipment. So if you guys look at this graphic representation, as the Army license call it, starting right here, we call this the 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, well, 4 o'clock more or less here, 8 and 10, you will see that from the 2 o'clock to the 4 o'clock position, you have a rifleman, a grenadier, and an automatic rifleman, correct? If you look from here, you go from the 8, or the 4, to the 6, to the 8, you have an automatic rifleman, a grenadier, you put him here, and a rifleman, okay? Same thing from the 8 o'clock position to the 10 o'clock position, a grenadier, a rifleman, and an automatic rifleman, the same thing from the 10 o'clock to the 2 o'clock. So no matter what side that this squad gets hit from, if they make initial contact, the squad leader can engage the enemy, <coughs> excuse me, with a grenadier, a rifleman, and an automatic rifleman. 363. All right. So on top of that, what does that do? That allows us to hopefully not lose two of the same weapon system on initial contact. Because we put automatic rifleman over here, automatic rifleman over here, and they get ambushed from the left flank, we take a chance of losing both automatic riflemen. All right, and that's never good. Okay. Next, talk about that basically covers your equal distribution of men, weapons, and equipment. All right. Next, we we'll talk about the 360 degree security. So by doing that, essentially what I just said, you have a automatic rifleman, a rifleman, and grenadier on all sides. The alpha team leader covers your 12 o'clock. From the 10 o'clock position to the 2 o'clock position, that is his sector. Okay? From the 2 o'clock position at the rifleman accomplishment to the grenadier, back to the automatic rifleman, this, it, they cover the 2 o'clock to the 4 o'clock. The grenadier is responsible for the 6 o'clock between the 4 o'clock and the 8. And between the 8 and the 10 is from the rifleman accomplishment up to the automatic rifleman in the lead fire team. Okay? 360 degree security. Three different mover techniques. Traveling, traveling overwatch, and bounding overwatch. What is traveling, and when are we going to use it? Traveling and uh, right. Low risk. Somebody stand yeah, up. Low, low risk. Stand up and say it. Somebody's got to know what traveling is. What do you got? Traveling is used when enemy contact is not likely, but speed is necessary. Okay, so what situation when we use traveling, if we know that speed is necessary and contact with the enemy is not likely. We're on our way towards uh, our feet. Um, basically anytime you're behind friendly lines. So right now in training setting, that is when you would utilize a traveling movement technique. Okay? Because we're not going to encounter enemy, so we don't need a large separation between our elements. Right? So what that means is, is a traveling overwatch when enemy contact is not likely, you're going to have a 20 meter separation between the lead fire team and the headquarters element. Okay, if you guys look up here in this little graphic, you'll see 20 meters for traveling, 50 meters for traveling overwatch. But notice, between the distance between the headquarters element and the Bravo team remains 20 meters no matter what you do, what your traveling or your movement technique is. Okay? With traveling overwatch, you have enemy contact that is possible. So, you're outside of friendly lines, you have the possibility of making contact with the enemy, okay? Now, all that does is it increases the separation between the, the lead fire team and the headquarters element to 50 meters. Granted, you have to understand this is MET TC dependent. <coughs> so if you're moving through thick vegetation, you're not gonna push out to 50 meters because you're gonna lose sight between your lead fire team and your headquarters element. So you only travel as far separated as possible where you can maintain command and control of your element. Okay? 
Now, bounty or what? What do you got? What's the distance between that lead fire team and the, and the headquarters element from Bounty Overwatch? So we got 20, we got 50. What do we got? What do you think? 20 meters between them. For Bounty Overwatch? So, all right, so let's look at it this way. How far are you going to bound your elements? What's the maximum distance you're going to bound an element? As far as you can. As far as you can support, okay, that's an accurate answer. So how far can we support with a M4? How far can you accurately place rounds? All right, so doctrinal answer is 600. I don't really say 600 because we only qualify up to 300, so that's the range that I want to say that I trust my men. So. Based off of 300, we cut that in half, it's 150, okay? So, that being said, bounty overwatch, your distance between elements is no more than 150 meters. It's no more than 150 meters because you have to have the ability to reach out and touch the enemy. If I put them at a maximum distance of 300 meters separation between the headquarters element and the lead fire team, then I know at that point I can no longer accurately hit the enemy because the enemy's not at 300 meters where these guys are. Okay, but if I cut that distance in half, that puts the enemy within my 300 meter range. Therefore, I can accurately place rounds in the enemy. Okay, so it's 20 meters for traveling, 50 meters for traveling Overwatch, and 150 meters maximum for bounding Overwatch movement technique. All right. Now, distance between elements, we've covered. Distance between personnel is depicted by METTC, your vegetation and your terrain. Okay? So like I said before, this is your base value, all right? 20, 50, 150. That can change, and it has to change based off of vegetation and terrain. Okay? So down where we're at in Fort Benning, the vegetation is extremely thick. All right? So we're not going to see a 50 to 100 meter separation between personnel between the traveling overwatch and the bounding overwatch movement technique. We're just not going to see it because you can't maintain control in those environments. Okay. Now up here you've got some areas that the vegetation is very sparse. You've got some areas down in here that we've seen up in your training areas where it's actually quite thick. Um, so you guys are really going to have to pay attention to that and shrink and expand your elements as necessary. Okay. Visibility. This is all done in good visibility, okay? Now, based off of what optics you have or what night vision capabilities, you can still maintain a fire team wedge in limited visibility. Absolutely can, okay? That also goes with how well you operate under knots and the capabilities of your element. All right, so, talking about limited visibility from the majority, we're gonna look at the modified wedge, okay? The difference between the fire team wedge and the modified wedge is no more than the, it's a three to five meter separation between personnel and approximately a 45 degree angle. So a 45 degree angle maintains, but the distance between personnel shrinks from 10 meters to three to five meters, okay? And essentially, all the fire team wedge, or the, all the modified wedge is, is two columns, right? Most everybody has done this walking down the road. You separate, you stagger, you walk in two columns down the road. The alpha team leader, Stay center line and the grenadier in the back stays center line to cover the 12 o'clock and the 6 o'clock. Okay? The actual separation of the elements remain the same. <coughs> your lead fire team, your alpha team, heads up to the lead. The headquarters element sits in the middle and the trail fire team or the bravo team picks up the rear. Machine gun placement, just like in the fire team wedge, you can go to the left side or the right side. However, it doesn't depict whether or not it's a heavy left or heavy right. Okay, for modified wedge, it's just where the machine gun is. And you can move them however necessary. But with this, the only personnel you're going to move is the gun and the RTO. Whereas the mod in the fire team wedge, you have to shift the gun and the AG to the other side. And that's why it's not considered a heavy left or heavy right. Okay. Leadership positions, they're still fixed in those unfixed positions. You're ahead. 
Alpha team leader is still fixed. Your squad leader and your Bravo team leader are still unfixed positions. All right. Any questions so far? All right. So let's talk about halt. So how do we call a halt? All right. Non-firing hand. 90-90. Fingers, thumb, extended, join. All right. That's it. So who can call a halt in your squad? Anyone. Anyone. It doesn't matter. Most commonly, the two personnel that are going to call a halt is going to be the alpha team leader and the squad leader. Okay? But at any time, if something happens, someone's injured, a piece of mission essential equipment is lost, anything happens in the squad, anyone can call a halt. Okay? See the enemy. All right? Most commonly, lead team leader and squad leader. So if the lead fire team leader calls a halt, he's going to do nothing more than call the halt, turn around, Get eye contact, make sure that the guy that he called the halt to understands. Once he understands, he starts to relay the, the um, hand arm signal backwards. That lead team leader is going to look for the next cover concealed position and he's going to take up the shore off posture. All right? <coughs> what is the shore off posture? Taking a knee with your ruck on. All right, taking a knee with your ruck on. That's it. So keep my ruck on. I'm going to walk up, find a tree or a suitable piece of cover, some concealment, take a knee behind it. Okay? Maintain my sector of fire and continue pulling security. Once he does that, the automatic rifleman and the rifleman will relay back again the hand arm signal and they will seek the next cover concealed position for themselves and, and begin making this formation. Okay? Now, once the grenadier gets the hand arm signal and he passes it back, and more than likely the, the automatic rifleman will pass it back as well. The squad leader will continue to move in and collapse in to where he's sitting between where the grenadier is and if you want to call it a ghost man over here, okay? So he's, you're actually collapsing in your element. Too many times I see guys, they call a halt and everybody just stops and sits down, right? We're not doing that, okay? Collapse in, let this headquarters element collapse in center and let that be that, okay? Because that allows this Bravo team or your trail fire team to come up and collapse and hit this three and nine at approximately 35, 35 meters or hand grenade range. Okay. So, like I said, they call a halt, grenadier, and the automatic rifle will pass back. Squad leader sees it. He passes back the hand arm signal. And he seeks cover concealment right in this inside. Initially, the squad leader, the RTO, and the gun team will just collapse in and pull up the center, all right? Once they pass back the hand arm signal through the headquarters element to the Bravo team, the Bravo team leader will stop initially somewhere around the six o'clock, and he will direct his men, okay? It's maintaining command and control of your element and maintaining security. So the Bravo team leader stops somewhere around the six o'clock location. Once he's collapsed in and he knows that he can actually establish this, 40, or this uh, 35 meter separation between the automatic rifleman and the rifleman <coughs> at 30, 35 meters for hand grenade range. Okay? The Bravo team leader collapses. The automatic rifleman, you'll see, pushes over to the 3 o'clock. Rifleman over to the 8 o'clock. Approximately 7, 8 o'clock. And the grenadier is going to pick up the rear. Okay? Once the element has halted, since the lead fire team leader called the halt, the squad leader is going to Proceed forward to the lead fire team leader's location, okay? Because the lead fire team leader called the halt. The squad leader needs to know what's going on. The squad leader walks up. On his way up, he checks these personnel, okay? He looks left, he looks right, and makes sure that they are pulled up behind cover and concealment and pulling security. He comes up and talks to the alpha team leader and asks him why he's halted, okay? Alpha team leader just briefs him real quick. This is what's up. This is why I call a halt. Whether it's you're at the security halt prior to the ORP, or whatever the case is that he called the halt, then the is gonna move back to center formation, okay? While the squad leader's moving up and talking to the alpha team leader, that Bravo team leader is going to quickly and hastily adjust his men. He's gonna look left, look right, make sure this automatic rifleman and this rifleman have collapsed far enough forward that he knows that they can provide that interlock sector of fire, and the grenadier is pulling rear security. The Bravo team leader then goes up here to the center of the formation, all right? where the squad leader's last known location was, not to the alpha team leader, okay? So typically the Bravo team leader walks up, finds the RTO, and takes a knee beside the RTO and waits the squad leader to return. Once the squad leader returns to the center, 
This quality is going to break that Bravo tingulator of why we've halted. Okay? So, you look down here, actually during the halt, during good visibility, the covered lead fire team leader calls a halt, the hand arm signal for the halt, what the short halt posture is, elements closing the gaps. Next thing you need to cover is the machine gun placement. Alright? So, remember I told you, initially the gun team is just going to fall to the center. Okay, now, when you guys are pitching your op order, you're establishing your SOPs per squad, depending on what your mission is, and if you're for instance, if we know that we're going to run heavy left the whole way, because we know that we have a high speed avenue approach on the left hand side, there's nothing wrong with stating that anytime we take a halt, the gun team will go to the approximately the 9 o'clock position between the automatic rifleman and the alpha team and the rifleman and the bravo team. Okay? Nothing wrong with that. Now, if you know that you're moving or transitioning consistently between the strong or the heavy left and heavy right, there's nothing wrong with saying go to the center. Well, and that way the squad leader can say, okay, I know why we've halted, we're going to be here for a second, gun team, go over there. It's too easy. Okay? Do whatever you got to do to maintain accountability and command control of your men. Alright? Just don't let your guys go haywire and go wherever they want to. Alright, so the second more common way that you're going to call a halt is by the squad leader calling a halt. Two ways of doing that. Okay? First way, squad leader uses embedder whatever radio function you have, and he calls the alpha team leader and says, hey, halt the formation. And then the squad leader, or the alpha team leader, does exactly the same thing, hand arm signal, and they echo it back through the formation, and they, call, they do the halt, just like I just said. All right? The other way is the squad leader actually gets eye contact with the last man in the lead fire team, gives the hand arm signal for the halt, and they pass it forward. Okay. So, the squad leader calls a halt, lead fire team's going to halt, just like I just talked about. The difference here is, is once the lead fire team is halted, the alpha team leader rotates this rifleman to the 12 o'clock, the alpha team leader comes down to the squad leader's location, okay? Bravo team will do exactly as previously described. Now, anytime we halt, oh, before I go into that, are there any questions on the differences between the lead fire team leader and the squad leader calling a halt. No questions? Alright. Anytime we call a halt and our squad halts, what are we going to do? Alright, set up security is obviously first things first. Okay? You establish security hastily. What are you going to do after that? Seals. Seals. Alright. So what does SEAL stand for? It's right here. Number seven. Stop, look, listen, and smell. Alright, so what does stop mean? Stop moving. That means I, you're not sitting there adjusting your rock sack. You're not flipping your dust cover on and off. You're not, you know, checking bags. You're not fiddling around or playing with ants. Alright, you are stopping all movement. Next, look. You're looking, you're scanning your sector, okay? We all know that when we call a halt, we don't have a sign sector to fire. It's hasty. Therefore, you're looking left to right and ensuring that there are no enemy presence. You're also looking the ground and the surrounding areas around you. That doesn't mean you're staring at the ground. It means you're looking at the ground. You're looking for trash. You're looking for petroleum products. You're looking for any kind of signs, brass, fighting positions <coughs> of the enemy. You're looking for the signs of the enemy's presence. You're listening. All right, that's why we're stopping. If you're rustling around, we've all taken a hearing test, right? You're sitting in that hearing booth and you got those stupid little plastic headphones on and you're trying to hear these very, very faint beeps. But the guy next to you is over there rustling around in his chair and adjusting his sleeves. Every time he crinkles that Velcro, you want to punch him, right? <laughs> so, same thing. If you're out there rustling around in the woods, you're not going to be able to hear as far off as you could if you if everyone stopped. So we're going to stop, we're going to look, and we're going to listen. Next thing you're going to do is smell. Okay? How many people in here has been through ranger school already? One. Alright. In ranger school, somebody opens a packet of peanut butter in the trail fire team and you're the lead fire team leader, you smell that peanut butter. Okay? Same thing in the woods. If somebody's got a campfire, smoking a cigarette, anything, if the wind is right and the wind is pushing that to you, 
you can absolutely smell the enemy. You might you may not be the enemy, but you can smell someone, the presence of something that's out of the ordinary. Alright? So we're gonna stop, we're gonna look, we're gonna listen, and we're gonna smell. Seals. Another acronym for you. Once this is done, you're gonna pinpoint the location of the map. Okay, so understand this portion between one and between six. That is the beginning. No. All right, that's your lead fire team leader, your, your uh, squad leader calling the hall. From 7 through 13, it remains the same no matter what, okay? Doesn't matter who called the hall. So we call the hall, we conduct sales. Next thing we're gonna do is pinpoint and your decision point, okay? So we'll pinpoint. What are we pinpointing? Speak up, Calm. Pinpoint location on the map, okay? We are pinpointing, we're finding out exactly where we are currently on the map, okay? So, your alpha team leader, your squad leader, we're in the center of the formation, okay? Alpha team leader and squad leader are going to pinpoint location on the map. The squad leader is going to give a task to the standards to the Bravo team leader. The Bravo team leader is going to start making his way around. The way he's going to do that is he's going to say, Bravo team leader, once you go to the three of the clock location of the formation, now I want you to work from the three to the six to the nine o'clock location, and I want you to and place your men, ensure that we have interlock detectors to fire, and make sure that everybody's awake and full security. Okay? So, if you want to hook your guys up as a Bravo team leader, is knowing that you're going to be the first man out, you go over this three o'clock location and you look for an easily identifiable object that you think you could throw a grenade to. Okay? That way, or yeah, so you look for easy identifiable object right around the 3 o'clock location. You make your way around. At the 9 o'clock location, you look for an easy identifiable object at approximately 35 meters. Once you hit this location, you're going to come back into the squad leader. When you get back there, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look at that alpha team leader and you're going to tell him what the easy identifiable object is at the 3 o'clock and what the easy identifiable object is at the 9 o'clock. If you do that, you give him two identifiable features the lead fire team leader can then go out and make any minor adjustment he's, he needs to, starting at the 9 o'clock, working to the 12, and back to the 3, and lining up to where he knows that his automatic rifleman can throw a grenade to that same location. Okay? And that is the easiest way to maintain security and have that analog safety of fire at approximately 35 meters or hand grenade range. Okay? Now, so like I said, the Bravo team leader is going to go out and he's going to troop a line. The alpha team leader and the squad leader are going to stay in the center and they're going to pinpoint the location <coughs> of the map. The Bravo team leader comes back in, the squad leader gives task and the standards and a time hack to the alpha team leader. The ATL goes out, he troops the line, he adjusts the security perimeter to ensure that we have analog set fire at the 9 and the 3. He works from the 9 to the 12, the 12 to the 3, and then he comes back to the center. Okay, while he's doing that, the Bravo team leader and the squad leader are pinpointing their location on the map as well. Why do we have two people pinpoint? Two different brains. Double check. Two different brains. All right. Like I said before, we're all humans. We make mistakes. All right. So if the alpha team leader, even though he's doing land navigation, he planned the routes. He knows what he should be coming up on. He may still mess up. <coughs> all right. So we're going to get the idea from the alpha team leader, the Bravo team leader. What you're also doing is you're keeping the Bravo team leader engaged in the patrol. Okay. You're not leaving him back there in the dark. He's constantly in the know. All right? You want people to work for you, you have to keep them knowing what's going on. So once all of that is done, okay, that becomes your decision point. Are we staying here long term or are we picking up and moving because we're not as close to the ORP or the tentative ORP as we thought we were? Okay? So once you make that decision and you say, yes, this is going to be our security off prior, we're going to stay here for a little while, we have to push out a recon element. If we know that, we're going to transition from the short haul posture of nothing more than taking a knee of the rucksack on our back to a long haul posture. Okay? Long haul posture is nothing more than taking your rucksack off quietly, placing it frame down, cat eyes facing back towards the center of the formation or the center of the perimeter. Okay? <laughs> Getting down to the prone. And nine times out of ten, when we transition to a long haul posture, we're going to strong point our men. Okay? Who can tell me what strong pointing is? All right, two people or two or more people that are close together, you touch it, right? 
right. So we come in. We know that we're going to be here for a little while, right? So we're going to, this wall here is going to give a task to standard time hack to the ATL and the BTL. All right. Alpha team leader, go to the 9 o'clock, work from 9 to 12 to the 3. Bravo team leader, go to the 3 o'clock, work 3, 6 to 9. All right. Strong points are men in approximately the 2, 4, 8, and 10 o'clock locations and place them in the hall posture. Now, if you've got two personnel in a location, they can pull security for each other. Okay? If it's only one person, that team leader has to stay there and pull security for that guy while he transitions into the long haul posture. Okay? So the Bravo team leader kicks out. He goes over here. If we look at this instance, the, out, the automatic rifleman has no one that he can strong point with, right? Therefore, the Bravo team leader is going to walk right over here. He's going to pull up beside the automatic rifleman. He's going to take the short posture. He's going to tell that, that um, automatic rifleman to transition to long posture. He'll set his 249 down on bipods, take his rucksack off quietly, not violating noise light discipline, place his rucksack frame down, cat eyes facing towards the center of the perimeter, and he'll get down to the prone and reassume security on his sector of fire. This time he's also going to disseminate information. Okay? He's going to tell him at a minimum where we are by physically point, pointing the location on the map, okay? What the distance and direction is for our next movement, all right, 300 meters at zero degree azimuth to our ORP, and while we've halted, okay? So you're keeping your guys knowing what, what you're doing, why we're stopping, where you're at, and how far we're going on our next leg, okay? At a minimum, he's also assigning a sector of fire making sure that he understands the sector of fire and nothing's changed, okay? Bravo team leader will continue on around his sector from the 3 o'clock to the 9 by way of the 6. And the alpha team leader will do the exact same from the 9 to 12 to the 3, okay? While the team leaders are doing that, the squad leader will take that gun team and place them wherever he needs to in the perimeter based off of his met TC analysis, okay? Once he places the gun, he will tell whichever team leader that that gun team is in their section that they belong to him. From that point forward, in this case, the alpha team leader is in charge of that gun team. All right. So anything that needs to be disseminated, getting them back up into a short posture, moving them, anything of that nature, belongs to that alpha team leader. Okay. So if they're in your sector, don't forget about the gun team. Now, once everything's done, the squadron moves back to the center. Team leaders move back to the center. Everything's golden. The squad leader's going to go out and spot check. Okay? He just pops around wherever he thinks. Me personally, absolutely the 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock locations. And the gun team, make sure information has been disseminated. Everyone has sections of fire. And we're interlocking at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock at approximately 35 meters or hanging in range. Okay? Once we have accomplished that, <coughs> call higher your op skeds and make sure that everything's good and we're ready to move, okay? Now, talk about prepare to move, that's picking back up. So basically we're going to do everything in reverse order. So once we are getting ready to move, say we pushed out to our security hall prior, or pushed out to the RP, recon it, we come back to the security hall, we're going to pick up and start moving, all right? So <coughs> the squad leader gets back in the center of the formation, all right? The gun team, they're going to remain exactly where they are. The alpha team leader is going to start movement. So the squad leader gets tasked in the standards like before. He's going to start movement around the 9 o'clock to the 12, 12 to the 3. The Bravo team is going to go 3, three, or three to 6, 6 to 9. And they're going to push, pick their men back up in the short posture. Okay? So just like before, he'll, the Bravo team leader will pull security to the automatic rifleman. And once he's done, he'll walk over to this group. That are all strong pointed and say, hey, up in the posture. And then the grenadier will pull security for the rifleman, and the rifleman will pull security for the grenadier while they transition. Okay? Same thing in the altitude. Once everything's done, everybody picks back up. The squad leader gives a hand arm signal to move. Alpha team leader picks up, starts moving. All right? Once the lead fire team element gets this separation, either 20, 50, or 150, once they get that separation, the squad leader will pick up and begin movement. And as he picks up and moves past the 
Um, the gun team, the gun team will just follow in suit, and the Bravo team element will get their 20 meter separation. They will pick up and begin moving as well. Any questions on occupying the security hall or picking up and moving once you are coming out of the security hall? What do you got? If I'm not uh, moving out of the club to pick up those guns, all right, so that goes back into situational awareness for that gun team, okay? If, say, the gun team is in control, or the uh, Bravo team element is in control of the gun team, Bravo team leader is going to get them that show-off posture. But from that point, that gun team, specifically that the AG, needs to be primarily facing his focus back onto that, that squad leader. Okay? Because the minute he sees the lead fire team take off and start movement, the headquarters of the squad leader and the RTO pick up, the minute the squad leader and the RTO pick up, that gun team needs to pick up as well and fall in suit with them. Okay? So it's up to that, it's, it's really up to that AG to be on his toes and waiting for that movement to initiate. Alright. Now, if you have a problem with that or if you just if, if you don't trust your guys really, I would say pull that AG and that gun off. Go ahead and bring them in the center, and they can just move out with the rest of the headquarters on. All right. That's your question. All right. All right. So let's talk about limited visibility. Okay. <coughs> really, your only changes in limited visibility is the fact that you can't see as well. Okay. Calling a halt. If you're using night vision devices, is basically the same thing. It's a hand and arm signal. Okay. If you don't have the appropriate nods or your guys aren't comfortable using nods, okay, when a lead fire team leader calls a halt or the squad leader calls a halt, the way that you communicate is still the same, okay? Hand arms or um, use FM radio to communicate. If you cannot, the alpha team leader just simply turns around, walks over to the guy that's next, basically puts his hand in his chest and says halt, okay? If the squad leader is calling a halt from the rear because FM's not working. He's going to walk up to the grenadier. He's going to put his hand on his shoulder and say, hey, call a halt. And then that's just going to proceed all the way to the front to the alpha team leader. Any questions on that? No? Okay. So once we call a halt, alpha team leader calls a halt. He's going to turn around, put his hand on his chest, say halt. The rifleman will pass back, once he passes it back, the rifleman <coughs> will assume the shore out posture back on the right hand side. Okay, so I walk back, I put my hand in the chest of the guy behind me, a hey, halt. I turn back around, I go back to my location, I pick up a knee behind uh, pick up a knee behind a short uh, piece of cover concealment, and I halt. Okay. Essentially all this is is two columns. Okay. I Pick up my short out posture, face out to the right, pull security. Automatic rifleman faces out to the left, short out posture behind cover concealment, pull security. Okay, you're going to leave some space between your elements, so that your leadership, your squad leader, and your Bravo team leader and your Alpha team leader can walk up and down through this line. Okay, so you want some space. You don't have to be huddled up against each other. However, it's going to basically be two straight lines pushed out to the side. Okay. Same thing as before, when you halt, you're going to conduct seals immediately after the halt. So you're going to stop, look, listen, and smell. Okay. Once you've done that, you're going to pinpoint your location on the map. This is where things get different. Okay. You're not just going to be able, you're not, not just going to pull your map out and you know look at it in the dark. So either one, you can do the right thing, adjust your nods and look at your map through night vision, or two, you could pull out the poncho and poncho liner of your RTO, drape that over you, pull out a red lens, and then the RTO will make sure that no light escapes from outside the uh, poncho and poncho liner. Okay? <coughs> so, do your map check, pinpoint your location of the map. At that point, you're again, pinpoint decision point. So you're going to decide whether or not you're going to stay in this location for a period of time, or if you're going to pick up and move out. Okay? You're going to be here, you're going to transition slow hot posture, and you're going to strong point your man. Strong point remains the same, okay? You're going to strong point, two guys in one location, 
Full security for each other, you transition to long haul posture. Okay? Long haul posture, rucksack frame down, cat eyes face towards the center. You carry on. Dissemination of information. Again, this is where a change comes in. Okay? When you disseminate information and limits of visibility, you're not going to point to a location of the map. You're just going to give a six digit grid. Okay? Or an eight digit grid. One of the two. Preferably eight digit, but if not six digit at the minimum. Alright? So you disseminate your information. The gun placement, again, remains the same. Wherever METC says, if the squaller here has predetermined locations to where he wants the machine gun placed in specific areas, all right, but you really need to do a analysis of the terrain to the best of your abilities, low to visibility, to make sure that you're placing that gun in a location to where it's an, it is an effective weapon system. Okay. At that point, you're on a spot check your men, make sure that you have security, everyone has interlock set to the fire, and everybody staying awake. Once he spot checks, you call off good, let hire know what's going on, and that's that. Once everything's complete, you're ready to move. Picking up and moving is a little bit different. All right, so you walk. The alpha team leader is going to walk back to the rifleman's location. He's going to tap him on the shoulder. Hey, we're moving. He picks up short posture. The rifleman goes back to the automatic rifleman. Hey, we're moving. And then once you get your separation, everybody just starts picking up and moving out. Okay. There's no separation between elements. Remember that. So the, the distance between the grenadier and the squad leader is three to five meters at a 45 degree angle. All right. There's no 20 or 50 meter separation. The reason we're moving this is, limited, is because it's limited visibility. So we don't want huge separations or we lose command and control. All right. Now, head count. Two variations here. Okay. One, the Bravo team leader and the Grenadier move up to the front. Okay. Create a choke point. Alpha team leader files out. Everybody starts moving. They move past the Bravo team leader and the Grenadier. He gets a head count. The Bravo team leader and the Grenadier pick up when the last man passes and they start movement. Okay? If you do it with the Bravo team leader and the Grenadier, you maintain the correct walking order. Okay? Once that's done, the Bravo team leader is going to walk up to the uh, automatic rifleman. Um, he walks up to the automatic rifleman and says, hey, head count good, pass it up. The automatic rifleman is going to pass to the rifleman accomplishment and this is going to continue all the way up to the Alpha team leader. Once it hits the Alpha Team Leader, the Alpha Team Leader is going to pass it back. And that should go all the way back to the Bravo Team Leader. That lets him know that we have good communication throughout the squad. We have no bracing contact. All right? Two, that lets the squad leader know that we have 100% of men moving at this point. Okay? Now, here's the difference. If you have a break in contact, or, it doesn't, or the head count is bad, all right, you're going to halt the formation. That's it. There is no, hey, let's recheck or recount, none of that. All right, we're out here in a trade off schools setting. We don't have time to be playing the, well, let's get a recount and recount the recount. Okay, if we have a miscount and we don't have 100% of men, we're just going to halt the formation. We're going to get accountability and we're going to continue mission. Okay, because more than likely what happened is, is somebody back here fell asleep. All right, they fell asleep back at where we were, and we started moving. Things are going awry. We need to stop the formation, go back, pick the guys up, continue moving. All right. Any questions with formation order movement? What do you got? So when the alpha team leader says we're moving, he has to wait for the information. He goes down to the right here at the six o'clock, come back up, and then he starts moving. No. So essentially, if we're in formation right now. And I'm going to start with Sergeant Rap. Rap. All right, Sergeant Rap is going to look to the right and tell Sergeant Smiley, hey, we're moving. Sergeant Rap, once he verifies, or basically a quick back brief, all right, we're moving, and he begins his movement back here, I'm going to pick up a, a half step, essentially, until I turn around and see <coughs> Sergeant Smiley. And Sergeant Smiley is going to pick up a half step. And what you're doing is you're allowing the separation to build. Okay, so if I'm half stepping here, and I look back and I see Sergeant Rap coming up on me, I know, okay, he's good. Now I start moving at a normal pace. Sergeant Smiley's picking up his half step. When Friday Vincent gets up, I know that we're, you know what I'm saying? And then by the end of it, we have that three to five meter separation at a 45 degree angle throughout the whole squad, and we have 100 students in. All right? Answer your question? All right.
Any other questions? What do you got? So for the limited vis visibility <coughs> for the long haul, when the alpha team leader goes back to the rifleman and purposeman, and they, he gets into the short haul posture, is he pulling security for him while he's getting into the short haul posture and so on and so forth? All Not for short haul posture, because short haul posture is nothing more than taking a knee. Okay. But just for to get your ruck back on and make sure oh. you're, all, you're all strapped down, he's pulling security for okay, you. Okay, right. You're if that. you're talking right. about going from the long haul to the short haul? Roger. Yes. Okay. All right. So you're either going to, so depending on if you strong point your man, so like nine times out of ten to keep people late, what I'm just going to do, and I'm going to come down through here, and I'm going to say, you two group together, you two group together, you two group together, so on and so forth. Okay, well, not these two, but you know what I'm saying? Typically, the squad and the RTO, they'll group together. Probably uh, machine gunner and the AG, they'll group together. And I'll put live entities together to where I have my guy strong pointed throughout the formation. Okay. And then that way, they can do that. More or less, they can keep each other awake throughout the night because limited visibility, I mean, you guys will see. Here in a couple of days, we'll be doing our uh, practical exercises out here and you guys will be falling asleep on the knee doing a PE. Like it's just, it's the nature of it. Long classes, moving to PEs, it happens, okay? So it's, it's way worse in the woods at nighttime when somebody's watching the green screen, all right? Answer your question? Yes, thank you. All right, any other questions? What do you got? Um, with the bounding overwatch, where does the headquarters element go when you're bounding between cover? But bounding overwatch? Okay, so you're not, is that, is for the bounding overwatch, you're not actually bounding. The bounding overwatch is, it, you're, we're talking meters. about the distance between the elements. You got 50 right. meters. Or 100. So we're looking for somewhere 100. between 50 and 150 meters. Yeah. But no more than 150 meters, okay? But you're not actually bounding. That's where you start talking into like contact. large open danger area. Satellite Or uh, break contact, that's when you start talking about bounding. Or bounding long, longer distances, rather. Make sense? It'll make a lot more sense here as these classes go through and you start seeing where the stuff gets pieced together. Alright. Any other questions? What do you got? Uh, are we assuming the RTO has a rifle as well? The yeah, RTO will absolutely have a rifle. What or should have a rifle. Uh, security responsibilities. Nothing different than anyone else. The only thing so is he's he to be radio too. A modified wedge. He's centered. <coughs> So, okay, so modified wedge, the RTO, he's doing just like, no different than the, the automatic rifleman or no, uh, the AG. Sorry, sorry, you're at a security hall. Oh, you're at a security hall? Oh, no. At a security hall, you see the RTO's in the center. He's, the minute the squad halts, the RTO becomes that squad leader's sidekick. When you're moving, the RTO's, he's another rifleman. Just like a medic. If you attach a medic to me, that medic's carrying a gun, he's doing his job as an infantryman in that moment. The minute we stop, we remove him from his primary duty of carrying a gun and pulling triggers to now that man is my direct line of communication to hire, he's not moving. So no matter if you're in the security hall, good visibility or limited visibility, the RTO will always be right beside the squally. All right, does that answer your question? It, it does, sir. Okay, any other questions? All right, excellent. So here's the deal. Uh, right now I've got 13, or not 13, my bad. <laughs> um, it'll be 11, 1048. 1048. All right, uh, 1048, let's call it, well, now it's almost 1050. All right, so uh, let's call it 11 o'clock, back in here. You guys go take 10 minutes, decompress. I got it, all right. This stuff is like colors and crayons. <laughs>